in. Now I'd like to demonstrate for you the automated multiple language translation that I integrated into Meeting Planner. So um, the way that, first I'm going to show you how it works and then I'm going to talk to you about how it came about. And um, so basically, typically if a user arrives at, a, at our website from an international location, their browser may be set to their native language, in which case the site will just load with their native language. But if they choose to switch in or out of a different language, um, the drop down allows them to do that. So let's say I want to see the site in Russian, or let's say I want to see the site in Spanish, or let's say I want to see the site in Chinese, or let's say I want to see the site in. <laughs> Can't always uh, read them. Um, it, once you've changed language, it shows them in the, its native people's native language. So here's, I think, Saudi Arabian. Um, so now, how did all this come about, and how does it work? Um, before I had started Meeting Planner, I was um, writing tutorials for um, Envato Tuts Plus, and um, before you, you know tech shame, technical writing, I want to say a few things. First of all, it was at a time when uh, working with them allowed me to work on other projects and I'd negotiated a rate that was quite good for like surprisingly good for technical writers and they really allowed me to write about whatever I want. Like for one, one great example, I wrote a series about how to keep your website running after you die, which turns out to be a really hard problem. Um, and at one point I said to them, uh, what if I, I had this startup idea, I said, what if I write a tutorial about trying to build a one person startup? And they said, go for it. So um, basically I started building this product and talking about all the issues that come up and it's basically um, turned into about 50 episodes as I documented like the first half of building uh, the, the web service for allowing people to plan meetings more simply. And you can see all these different articles here, um, how we did scheduling a meeting or how we integrated Mailgun. Um, I'm just browsing through these. Um, how I did OAuth to allow simple one-click um, login from Google, Facebook, or LinkedIn, things like that. And here's a really interesting one on, um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about how much open source code I was using. So uh, I, I just, dedicated one episode to describing all of the open source modules that I've used to build Meeting Planner. And at one point I decided to cover localization. Uh, I'm programming for this in Yi framework, YII framework, which is um, basically a model view controller for PHP and it's incredibly powerful. At the time it was ahead of Laravel and so um, I found that I could do anything that I wanted with it. The community is great. There are plugins and packages for nearly anything you want to do. And um, it also has a sc scaffolding for building code. So it just, it's so fast to build stuff. It's just super fun. And um, so this was an episode just like how to use Yee's built in language translation. So in this case, you're using a translator, and I'm showing you how to, to upload those translated files into the Yee code base to make it work. And I, I started having this idea like what if I integrated the Yi framework with the Google Translate API? And so then I wrote an essay about that as I was building it for Meeting Planner. And so this allowed me essentially as a one person startup to have imperfect translation for any language I desired which in this case ended up being, I think, about 20 different languages. Um, and this, this tutorial, um, with a shout out to the Swedish chef, um, shows people how I did it. And um, it, it was just a really fun project. And as you can see, the outcome was incredibly powerful. Like, here's Meeting Planner in, Hindu, uh, in Hindi. Um, I want to talk about one other thing, which, uh, oh, let me show you the code. So. Here is the Yi code for um, my English translations. And as you can see, it's just basically one-to-one. -one. It's all English. 
and uh, front end is my file for my front end website. And then let's say um, this is again an auto generated French translation file. So it's the same English strings on the left, and then on the right, you have the French translations provided by Google Translate. And um, Yi does have um, tokens um, that you can use for um, standard uh, variables that will be replaced in real time. Um, let's see, let's look at Japanese. So here's a Japanese translation file for meeting planner code uh, strings, essentially. And then let's look at Russia. Here's some Russian language strings. And here's Chinese. So by automating this, um, I have allowed meeting planner to become an international scheduling calendar site, which is pretty amazing. Um, but one question you might have is, well, how do people in China find meeting planner? And this is um, the hardest part of the project, I'd say, was making Google sitemaps um, work for, um, for multiple languages. The standard is really confusing and very time consuming to implement, but this is sample code from our sitemap. Uh, Meaning Planner is compact enough as a site, like there's not a lot of breadth to it. You're scheduling a meeting, you're viewing your meetings, that I could use one sitemap file. And um, what you can see here is pretty much um, the hreflangs have a reference for the um, each page of the site in every language. So here's Spanish, French, German, um, Dutch, uh, etc. for every URL. So the sign up page, the find time page, um, the request password reset. Um, and then of course the sitemap standard is ridiculous in that you have to have every iteration of every iteration. So it just goes on forever. And that wasn't very fun to code. But it allows people in any country to actually find Meeting Planner when they're searching for a solution. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed, um, oops, change this, the screen size. Uh, I'll just show you one more thing. All the pages in, um, in Meeting Planner are translated. Um, the only difference is that the translation uh, control moves to the bottom. Um, and um, here's our registration page. Let's say you want to look at it in Chinese. So I hope you've enjoyed this and thanks for watching.